Good afternoon, I'm Jim Cooper, Editor-in-Chief at Digiday, and we're at the Digiday Video Studio at the Blockboard Villa uh, Cannes 2024 on the fourth day of the festival. And we're really lucky to have Tim Ellis, who's the Chief Marketing Officer at the NFL with us this morning. Tim, welcome. Thank you. How are you doing? Good to be here. I, well, I've survived four days. Congratulations. So I'm, uh, no, it's been great. I, I got here on Sunday. It's been a really intense, but really an amazing week. So uh, let us know what the uh, what your mission was as the CMO at the NFL for the Cannes 2024. What, what, what were you here to really accomplish? Well, there's a lot of uh, key strategic initiatives that we have as a league that were important for this particular festival. One of those is our international expansion. We have a pretty aggressive expansion right now, which is pretty exciting. Uh, we have five games coming up this next season. Um, we have games in London, we have games in Germany, and then we're Sao Paulo for the first time. And next year, we're gonna have games in uh, Spain, for example. We have, there are several places around the world uh, that we'll be expanding to. And then of course, we're aggressively, you know, working to expand our fan base, right? Across these markets as well. So that's part, part of the mission. Uh, we also, uh, flag football is very important to us. Uh, it's helping us grow young fans. It's more inclusive than any of our other activities around the game of football. Uh, so it's, it's a way for us um, to like go into some of these countries and establish participation, right? And so again, getting the word out there, talking with some of the, you know, the biggest, most important companies in the world who, who come here and to learn is important. And you know, like every other brand, um, being a strong uh, marketing machine and having great uh, creative, which is uh, relatable but also relevant, is important to us. You know, I, we have a great product, and I'm that's that's terrific. But like every other brand, you know, we have to build our the brand equity of the NFL. We have to communicate effectively who we are as a brand to bring to bring in some of the more casual fans to be more avid fans. And so um, understanding what the world is thinking about and what's considered excellent today and, and just marketing is important to us as well. And I, I, I pride myself on having a great team and that extends to our partners and so forth, agency partners. But we, you know, we've, we have been able to sort of build a team which is doing some of the best work in the industry. Uh, and, and not just in the sports industry, but overall marketing industry. And I, I want to keep that going. Right. Yeah. I had, I had a, one of my favorite interviews uh, yesterday was with Laura Krug, who is yeah, the CMO of the Kansas City Chiefs. And yeah. they're doing all sorts of amazing stuff to come, become yeah. the, a national and international team. Yeah. But like, as, as a dad of two uh, female athlete daughters, uh, the, the whole flag football thing was incredibly uh, moving to me, like what they're, what they're doing. Do you, how do you see that rolling out as a driver for female sports fans in the U.S. and globally? Well, I, I should start by saying that the one of the keys to getting lifelong fans is participation. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? Like it's about one in four, um, one in, you're four times more likely to become a fan, put it that way, if you, if you play the game, sure. right? And the nice thing about flag is it's completely, you know, gender neutral. So it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic way to bring in um, girls and women to play the game. So, and, and we know from all of our data that if you don't get someone to be a fan by the time they're 18 years old, you're never gonna get them, mm -hmm. right? So it's like there's, there's, no, there's no acquisition strategy for a 34 year old, right. put it that way. Yeah. Uh, so like getting them to play that game, whether it's you know, video games, Madden or whatever, or flag football is, is critical. And I think that it's also, you know, families, they get excited about how their kids playing flag, right? A lot, of, a lot of, particularly dads who love the game, it's a way to connect and bond Absolutely. with their daughters by, by playing the games. Flag football now is one of the fastest growing sports uh, in the U.S. It's one of the fastest growing sports in the world. I think 20 million people today play flag football. And we just, a few months ago, just got it into the uh, 28 Olympics. So um, this week, what have been the more important conversations you've had like, um, that have, you felt have been like, okay, that was a light bulb going off or an, an epiphany moment? Yeah. Well, I can tell you, it's, it's interesting. I've been coming to the festival here for, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 years. I have never seen such focus and such an impact around sports, which is kind of cool, obviously, for the NFL, you know, being who we are, but it, I think it's great for the industry as well. I mean, live sports is still um, the thing that is bringing audiences, mass audiences together. 
I mean, if you just look at the NFL in the in the U.S., 93 out of the top telecasts last year were NFL games, right? We only have 6% of the games out there, but we have 47% of the actual engagement of fans. And so live sports is really, and the NFL in particular, is really um, in its sort of heyday. And maybe it's just natural, but like what they're doing here at the festival now, um, they're using sports to bring in big groups. And I, and I love it because they're, it's bringing in men and women, right? And it's also bringing in different countries with different types of sports, which I think is good, right? I mean, obviously I'm an advocate for, for, for the NFL, but I love to see all these athletes from all these different sports coming together, inspiring people and getting marketers to really think about the power of sports and what it can do. And to be honest, I think with the, the, the times that we're living in right now, sports is really the last big unifier. Yes. Agreed. Right. And I think yeah. we live in a divisive society. I think having, having sports is a, is, is, is a, you know, a series of brands that can bring in mass audiences and unify and get us all together is, is important. Yeah. I also think it's amazing that the technology's allowed the, the, the mountain sports content that we all you know, have uh, to be uh, redistributed to younger audiences and different platforms via like gaming and... Um, yeah. How are you bringing the youngest fans on board at this point, like, who might not necessarily have been fans before, you know, you know, yeah, that's a, that's a really important question, Jim. I, um, you know, when I first came onto the NFL, I had three key acquisition targets, and I said, you know, guys who look like me, they may be our fan base, but they're not the one we're going to talk to. You already got them. We got them, yeah. and we're going to have them. They're yeah. not. They're not going anywhere. Um, so we got to focus on young people, um, girls and women, and Latinos, and we got to be laser focused and disciplined about that. And those are the three cohorts that have actually driven our growth. Right. When I when I came to the NFL, the 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 youth segment was in a seven year decline. And I even though we had big audiences, I started ringing the alarm bell. Right. Of urgency yeah. saying we all got to focus on this now. Like, I don't know if you saw, for example, one of our alt casts last year uh, on Toy Story. We, we, we partnered with Toy Story. I did. Yeah. And so it's kind of simple the way that all came together technologically. But like we essentially used the chip in the shoulder and the mouthpiece that we that this data points that we use to sort of understand if a player gets hurt, why, and we can improve the game. So, right, make the game safer. Sure. So it was a health and safety uh, part of our technology. And we use that to actually then work with um, our partners at Disney, and we created a live alt cast of the game that's animated. Interesting. Yeah. Right, and then we set that game in Andy's bedroom with all the, the characters from Toy Story. It was incredible. And so that's one example, and it was hugely successful, not just for young people, but for families coming together as a unit. So this, this festival, as you know, because you've been here for, uh, for many years, yeah. uh, me too, uh, is always about creativity first. Yeah. But there's a lot of talk about technology here, yeah. um, especially AI this year. How do you see... Um, Oh, it's very the, real. The beginning yeah. of AI uh, melding with creativity to help you advance your storytelling for the NFL. I think that um, it's now going to help us bring to life um, art in a way that we haven't been able to do before. Much quicker, much more efficient. At scale. More, more brilliantly at scale. Yeah. Right? We're going to be able, to, we're not going to have to depend on the manual ways of like creating this art. It's going to happen faster. And I think that we're going to sort of see it creatively, how it can bring things to life in different ways than never before. Um, will it replace artists? That's the big question, right. right? How important is the idea? And can that be something that AI can get at? I think I don't think we know exactly right now. Um, I'm one of the ones to say, well, let's see. Yeah. Let's, let's wrap it there. Uh, Tim Ellis, uh, Chief Marketing Officer at the NFL. Tim, thanks so much for your time. I really yeah. appreciate it. It's good to yeah, see you again. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.